You know what I got about this show from the from the get go is is this show. It's gonna seem like a weird comparison, but it won't when I talk. It reminded me so much of AEW because what it was was a promotion that is for the fans. It is a promotion where the promotion is the babyface. That's true. If you watch WWE, the promotion is the heel. Uh, they have the uh, you know the GMs, the evil GMs. Vince is always fucking with the wrestlers and storylines. Stephanie's always fucking with the wrestlers and story. There's always heel GMs. Blah 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 blah. Whereas AEW, it's a babyface promotion. They always give you what you want. They tease something and they deliver it. And it was the exact same way with ECW. It's like these fans are diehard fans of this promotion. And whatever you want to say about Paul Heyman, whatever you want to say about whatever Paul Heyman did as a businessman, and uh, and he screwed up a lot of people's lives. In fact, Tommy Dreamer had a, a very famous claim about something horrible that he had thought about doing at a, a WrestleMania. That, in fact, included a homicide. That's how upset he was at, at Paul Heyman for the end of, of ECW. Whatever you want to say about that aspect of, of Paul Heyman, the fact of the matter is, as a booker, his goal was to never fuck the fans. It was always to give the fans exactly what they wanted. Obviously, heels would go over sometimes and that sort of thing, but it was all about... This is your company. These are your wrestlers. We are going to do what you want. And these other people are the enemy. And, of course, the big difference between ECW and AEW is we're watching the show in 1997 when WCW is on fucking fire and WWE is about to be on fucking fire. And it's very hard to be number three when number one and number two are on fire. And that's essentially the story of yep. the doom of ECW. Whereas nowadays, you've got a number one that has run off fans in droves. And now you have a number two, which, because of everything that has happened with WWE over the past 20 years, it took them two years to be a viable competitor for this company. So anyway, it's a story of, of running a babyface company as opposed to running a heel company. And that's the whole vibe I got during this show. Now that you're right, and it's a good point to bring up where this sits in history for those of you who've forgotten. This is April 1997, uh, so WCW is like at close to their peak or building towards their peak, and this is the same month as the Steve Austin Bret Hart WrestleMania match. So Austin is about to be Stone Cold Steve Austin, really, and that's the babyface turn. So uh, that is where we are in, historically. And this person here, by the way, says that Tony on uh, Busted Open said he's trying to be like ECW. And fuck, you watch the show and you can see it. I mean, the big difference is that the production values are much higher. There's and, many differences. And the work rate is like uh, it's two way million better. times yeah. better than ECW. But the vibe of the place, where this is a company for the people. We are here for you. We are serving you, the fans. Plus... If you look at this show, while the wrestling was not as good, what does remind me of an AEW show is all of the matches were different. Yes. We had normal wrestling matches. We had hardcore wrestling matches. We had Lucha Libre, uh, Michinoku Pro-style matches. We had barbed wire and violence. And we had a horrible match! <laughs> but I'll get to <laughs> Which that. Which is in, a different variety, Brian. A, it was a variety. Not, <laughs> not to, the spice of life. Not to take the show off track, but... If ECW would have gone, gotten on pay per view maybe a year earlier, do you think they could have lasted a lot longer? Well, it, it depends because could they have kept the same talent? The, the issue, the issue was was the talent. Yeah, and the issue was that their talent just kept getting raided every time they made a star. Their star went to WWF or WCW. Yeah, true. very same thing may have happened if they would started on pay per view a year earlier. Maybe if they got a year's jump, things might have been different, but. I think that because of where WWF and WCW were, I don't think there was any number three could have made it. Yeah. I just look at this opening match. Saturn's in WCW, I believe, by the summer. Dudley Boys are only sticking around another year or two. So uh, inevitably, there's going to be a talent drain. And there was not at the time uh, enough talent, I don't think, to support a third promotion viably. As opposed to now, there's all kinds of talent. Um, where you have MLW and ROH 
and uh, uh, Impact is still around, and there's there's all there's like many many promotions are doing well. And this is all very good news. Well, you also have an AEW MG- that's not broke. Yeah. So it's not like you make MJF a star and he's making thirty bucks a night. Yes. And then WCW just or WWE just steals him. Yes, I call them WCW. Now it's like everyone's making money, and they can be and they can be offered lots of money to not go to WWE if they become stars. Plus, no one trusts WWE. That's the other issue. Yeah. If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.